Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey guys, so this video is gonna be part one of my Japan trip. This is my first solo trip. Also my first time being in Japan, lots of first times. I went during the Golden Week, and if you do not know what the Golden Week is, it's like a series of holidays placed very close together, usually at the end of April or at the beginning of May. That's why it's recommended for tourists not to visit Japan at this time, because everybody's gonna be on holiday and then the streets are gonna be super crowded. But I just went during the golden week. Weather is peaceful and temperature is about 16 to 20 degrees Celsius. The chances of rain when I was there was very low on most of the days. The total trip cost about 1.7 Singapore dollars without shopping. I took Singapore Airlines, midnight flight for departing and night flight for alighting back into Singapore. Could be another hundred dollars lower if you were to go for more local budget restaurants. I mean, they are good as well. In Japan, it's not like you have to pay more for better food. It doesn't work that way. Most of the local restaurants actually taste a lot better compared to like the Ginza area, which is like the luxury shopping place. All right, for internet, I used eSIM by Wiz. It's the cheapest and most reliable one. The one that I got was one gigabyte for seven days, $10 US, unlimited 3G after you have used up your one gigabyte for a day. And I have never actually encountered a day where I've used up my one gigabyte, even though I've been using maps and translating very often throughout this trip. So the video documentation started right at Changi Airport Singapore. and this happened. Airport. This is Singapore's Changi Airport, Singapore's only airport actually. Okay, really amazing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yep, no videos allowed. And at that point, I realized that every store I go into, most of the time, I'll have to ask for permission before taking videos or photos inside a store. Later on, the staff told me that I can actually take a video upstairs since it's not a store. The point is to not be taking pictures of other clients. So I went up and there's this tiny exhibition of old trunks. They carry really exquisite and vintage items. And also the nice view of the store from above. Up on my flight, the experience was okay. I am very lucky to have the whole row throughout the flight by myself. And the whole flight took about 7 hours and after the 3rd hour, they actually got a bit cold. This was actually supposed to be a trip together with two others, but it turns out that they had an emergency and would be returning on my second day. And I'm glad that I did my homework for this trip, just in case things like that happen, you know, and, and it actually did happen. So yeah, this trip I'm alone. The next day I arrived at Narita Airport and I needed to take the Keisei Skyliner right to Ueno Station to get access to the Yamanote line for my hotel. I swear to god I was quite nervous, the first conversation with a Japanese and that was actually booking the ticket for the Skyliner. I was like, ego wa wakarimasu ka, ego wa wakarimasu ka. So over there, you, you, I say this a lot, same thing with uh, sumimase and arigato gozaimasu. It's like those are the really basic and when I said, do you know English? Ego wa wakarimasu And she was like, eh, a little bit. And actually throughout the whole conversation, I couldn't really understand what she was saying because the accent was a little bit strong. I am so sorry. I was frightened that I couldn't get the ticket on time uh, because I was quite in a rush to get to the hotel also to meet them because uh, I am actually really alone it's in a foreign place. I have no idea what is going on. And yeah, that first experience talking to a Japanese in English was quite daunting because we were trying to understand each other. But in the end, uh, she did a good job. Yeah, I managed to get the ticket. Because for KCA Skyliner, there will be time slots for each train. And usually you can book the one ahead and depending on what time you want to book, yeah. Later on in Narita Airport, I also got the Suica card. Sadly, it's not the Penguin card. The Penguin card actually lasts for 10 years and the one I get only lasts for 30 days. I recommend people to not get the one that I got. Money is actually refundable, but most of the time when you're rushing to get back to the airport, you also do not really have the time to um, refund the money, you know, at the counter and everything. There is like most of the time a really long queue, so like, ju just just get the penguin card. You you'll love it more. It's cute too, though. So the first toilet I used in Japan was also indeed in the Narita Airport. Very spacious, best toilet I have ever seen in my life. So good to the point where, oh man, I could not find where the flash button is. It is so fucking high-tech, I didn't fucking know how to operate it. Like, 
I remember I was standing there, just like finding for the flush. Most of the time, the flush button is like behind the toilet bowl, but in this case, it is not. So I literally stood there and Google how to flush toilet in Japan. And what I was Googling actually says like, oh, Japanese toilets have a small and big flush. And I just really couldn't find it. And the side of the toilet, there was this like additional extra buttons where you can like fucking play music in the toilet. And there's like a volume button. Okay, I, I do not know how this fucking thing works. Yeah, but afterwards I realized that for this toilet, the flush was on the wall. Yes, really amazing. I think the whole process took me about four minutes to figure out. Like imagine you being in the toilet for so long just to figure out where the flush button is. Like I was about to cry. Okay, but take note that just because this toilet has the flush button on the wall does not mean that all the toilets has. Through my five days of experience in Tokyo itself, some of these toilets are on the wall like this one, some are on the side of the toilet bowl, some are on the top and some are at the back, and some are even fucking on the ceiling. I'm just kidding. So the hotel we booked was Ram Akihabara. A really good place with a really good price. Very near most of the weep stores that an anime fan would like. We'll get into that in just a moment. Case okay, so Skyliner provides spacious seats and also usually you can choose between the window seat or the one that's beside the window seat, like the non-window seat, I guess. So um, yeah, usually you can choose whenever it's not peak period. And luckily for me, I didn't have to share the other seat with another stranger. There's nobody else beside me. So the whole ride was actually pretty spacious. The whole journey was peaceful. It took about 30 to 40 minutes in total and I felt really sleepy after half of the ride. It is quite boring and nobody is really talking. I mean, that's the rule in Japan. I'm not supposed to really talk on the train. If you want to, it's like really soft and you feel really sleepy, especially this once. first impression of Akihabara was really impressive and it looks straight out of a video game. It feels like I am walking into a video game environment. And that is why I love a lot of these buildings in Japan because they are placed in such a unique way compared to other places in the world. The air also feels a lot fresher there probably because, you know, it's less humid. And down to the main Weep Street area, you'll see Kaikan and Onodon right away. First location that we went to was Kaikan and it had so much stuff in it. Posters, body pillows, figures, really sus stuff. Almost everything, literally. And there is also a store dedicated for model kits, lots of gunpla, automobile, Tamiya kits, and also materials and tools, paint. You can find like, everything there, Tamiya, Mr. Hobby, Gaia, like everything is literally there. Like, really insane amount of items. And here's what I got from Kaikan, from one of the top floors, I forgot the store name, and also this Japan exclusive super rare guy. So it's amazing because I wasn't expecting myself to really get anything, it's just walking in to see what they carry and boom, like, there it is! Like, right there, and, it's, and at that point I was like, wow, this is, this is heaven, this is heaven for me and for a person who loves cast and nature figures. But of course, the rate would be like a second-hand market rate because, you know, all of these figures is like pre-ordered and then once pre-order is closed, that's it. The first official mail aid in Japan is also a store right inside this location. If I'm not wrong, this is a udon store. What I got is a udon. The taste is amazing and this, I don't know what it is, but I believe it's like a seaweed sauce. It feels weird at first, but I kind of like it afterwards. It's actually one of my favorite meals during my trip. And after that, we went to the 7th floor Gundam store right at that weep area again. And actually in Japan, you, you do have to look up because you'll see signboards on the buildings and then it will tell you what store they have. And if I weren't looking up, I wouldn't know that there is this other store right above this building at 7th floor. So in this store, it is very amazing. They carry a ton of stuff, a lot of Pibana kits as well. And then they have a Tamashii Nation Pibana stuff like um, Metal Build, Robot Damashi, Castle Nature, Fix of Creation, everything is kind of there, but uh, some old, most of it are the recent ones. They have a pretty good amount, so I eyed on the excess. It's something that I wanted for over five years. It is super rare, and the market value is kind of insane. And this store did carry one, 
pretty reasonable price, but I just did an impulse buy it because I really wanted to see if there's anything else that I'll be interested in for the rest of the trip. And um, yeah, that's kind of my mindset for this trip. I don't want to impulse buy things. It is just smarter this way. And most of these stores in Kaikan and also the trader that I just mentioned do not do tax no. refund, which means that even if you're a foreigner, you still have to pay for the 10% tax. How the tax refund work in Japan is that uh, usually you don't do it at the airport, you usually can just do it in store itself. So if it's like a big shopping mall with lots of stores, usually you just pay the full amount in stores and then they ask you to bring the receipt that you just got to a designated place inside the mall. Um, the bad thing about that is that usually if there is a long queue, you have to queue. And like if we're talking about the Mandaraki that I'm going to share with you guys now, this building is just Mandaraki itself. So in this case, you still pay the full amount, yeah, but you go down to the first floor and there is a designated area to do the tax refund. And if, let's say, a building has different stores, each stores are on different floors of the building, and then in that case, you should be able to get the tax refund inside the store at the counter, So, which means you wouldn't be paying the 100% you will just be paying the 90% right away. You wouldn't need to take the receipt anywhere else because in that case, usually there isn't a designated area in that building for you to do the tax refund, if that makes sense. Yeah, so going back to Mandaraki, it's a secondhand store with lots of goodies. There were dedicated floors for books, manga, dolls, model kits, action figures. There are even multiple floors dedicated for toys. There's this section just strictly for mecha, so it's like really my floor. And I ended up just actually getting art books from there as I'm a huge Katoki fan. Even the figures that I had on was just Katoki stuff, man. So these books were also a really good deal. I still remember getting the tax refund for this was a, was a bit pain in the ass because the bookstore was all the way at like level 4 or 5. Bringing that book all the way down and then all the way back to the hotel was a little bit problematic. So once I check into the hotel, it is actually not as spacious as I thought and there is actually barely any space for the luggage. So once I open it to pack or unpack, like that, there's no space for walking at all. But I like the fact that the toilet is facing the window and there's light coming in. So I got this room through ING, so that's pretty nice. After resting in the room a bit at about six o'clock, I meet up with them again. They brought me to Ikebukuro to check out a mall with lots of designer brands stumbled across this amazing looking CDG store with this cargo looking counter. Didn't really spend too much time there as like we were about to get dinner. So for dinner wise, we ate this nice food which only cost about 7 Singapore dollars. And for this it is right at Akihabara later on because we couldn't find any restaurants that were not packed in Ikebukuro. It is just less crowded in Akihabara compared to over there. And it is also relatively cheaper I believe. This for $7 is really worth it. And we walked a bit around that area later on and got back to the hotel. Have a good night's sleep. On the hotel bed that night, I was also deciding whether I want to head up to Harajuku or the Odaba Gundam area and Yokohama Gundam factory. And the problematic thing is that because I'm going on the golden week, the second day of my trip, 5th of May, would be Children's Day, and the following would be weekends, so it is really hard to plan. But I just thought that it is safer for me to not go to the Gundam locations, because it is on the Children's Day, and so the plan was to go to Harajuku on the Friday, which is the Children's Day. The next morning when I woke up, I also realized that the RNG is just this good and I also met a friend from Singapore within the same hotel then accompanied me once I've made up my mind about that excess yesterday that I mentioned. Yes, but unfortunately that would be his last day in Tokyo. Same with the two other people that I was with, but yeah, I am really alone. As of now, the only line that I've taken and know how to take is the Yamanote line. It is also the most convenient line from traveling around the whole Tokyo area. It brings you to Nippori and Ueno for the Narita airport that I came from. And it also goes to Akihabara, Tokyo Station, Yurokucho and Shimbashi for the Ginza area. And it also brings you to Shibuya, Shinjuku, Harajuku, Ikebukuro, and so it is a really good line. And Harajuku is like about 15 stations from Akihabara. Yeah, it was quite a long ride. <laughs>
Using the Suica card for JR trains is like a no-brainer and another thing is that you can also use your Suica card to get items from vending machines and convenience stores. Vending machines for drinks are also just right outside the train doors most of the time. This one over here is at Harajuku station, look how easy it is. And usually right beside these vending machines there will also be a dustbin strictly for bottles only. So you're not supposed to really throw other items in it. Dustbins are also quite difficult to find in Japan. So if you're ever finding for a place to dispose your empty bottles, the vending machines will be good for that too. Harajuku is also a location that people usually say is super crowded, but my experience was extremely pleasant. There were even times when there were nobody around, but maybe that's because I was following my own route. The first location that I walked to was great. And it was actually right inside this building's first floor. It took me a while to realize that I'm already at grade. I was like wandering around the area. I'm like, where is grade? I was walking back and forth, coming in and out of this mall. And then I realized that the place that I walked into was grade already. <laughs> Fuck man, that was hilarious. At Great, they carry a ton of stuff, a lot of designer goods, um, Balenciaga, Rick Owens, stuff like that. I heard they also have C2H4 and also Mastermind, but I just didn't come across anyone that was there. Pretty amazing store. Have a look. And after walking a little bit more, there is Nubian. This would be the area that is slightly a little bit crowded. So I walk past this really crowded street with this little girl and a big candy. Holy shit, that is huge. Really thankful for the staff to allow me to take videos of their store and products because not every store does. And New Beyond, they also carry a wide range of streetwear and designer products, most noticeable being Off White, Montclair, Alex, Palm Angels, and Mason Magella. I tried on the glasses from Off White because I was actually interested in Off White glasses before I was in Japan, and I'm glad that I did because they really didn't suit me. And right beside New Beyond, there's the Nogo Shrine. I stayed and I sit for a bit. And that's it because I've got a lot of places to still cover. Rip and Dip and also the super big New Balance store was along the way to my next destination as well, which is the Babe Kids store. This one over here is super wholesome. Just from the exterior itself, you can easily tell that it's gonna be a much more pleasant environment compared to your usual babe store. The floor is covered with this safari camo pattern with a mini cot, which is all around so far actually. And also the roof has this extruded babe logo. The staff was also really nice when I eyed on this piece, which I thought was a really, really cute pillow. But same like the access, I just really wanted to wait it out. Heading into the area with a ton of secondhand stores carrying streetwear and designer goods, I have entered multiple and checked out, but none really carried anything that caught my attention. Probably because I'm really not looking for clothes anymore, like really. 
And the prices were really good there. One salesperson even put out a brand new black off-white hoodie going for about 35,000 yen after asking for my favorite brands, which is a really good deal, but I just did not make the purchase. It is just not for me. I believe the hoodie was either this one or this one. Walking a little bit more to the Stuzi store in Harajuku, this one has a really nice entrance. And it is quite striking from the side, and I love the wooden floors on the interior, with these colored racks and bars all around, so it sort of has like a fine art kind of feel to it, like exhibition, but also not super clean and serious looking. I didn't stay for long because there is really nothing much for me. All of the design seems a bit too graphical. Carhartt as well, not too much for me either, but really nice boutique design though. Up to the second floor on the stairs, it also says more products upstairs, which I really find it very bold. And you'll be walking past this like wooden walls all the way up to the second floor. And it is actually a pretty small store, to be honest. Like the fact that it has two floors, but the amount of products they carry seems to be a lot lesser compared to the one that we have locally. I don't know, maybe it's just the way they lay out. And if you haven't checked out the local Carhartt store, definitely should. That one is ridiculously good. And then close by, there are also the Bape and Supreme store, but no photos allowed in the Supreme store. The Supreme store was actually crazy. There were security guards right at the door, and all of the staff were like guarding the display to avoid people from touching them. I'm not sure if it's always like that, or it's only when it's crowded, because it was actually pretty crowded when I was there, so... And yeah, it has quite a bad <laughs> review. Um, it's a pretty daunting store to enter. And soon after that, I then walked through a pretty crowded street of Omote Sando Hills. Check this out. And within Omote Sando Hills, there is also Wise from Yoji Yamamoto right in it. And this is also a really cool wall on their first floor. Pretty bold. The first floor carries no products, just this, with a staircase that lead you down. Check this out. It's very cool. At the back of Omote Sando Hills, there's also another babe store. Really nice interior as well. This one actually said no photos, but um, how do you resist these crazy stairs and this layout? After that, I walked towards Rectech and then passed by this popular building. Nothing much for me at Rectech, but they do carry some really good stuff of that top floor. Those are like for the luxury bags, Louis Vuitton and Gucci and all that stuff. I like how I keep saying that there's nothing much for me. <laughs> yeah, usually for me, it's like, I have to be eyeing on something. If not, usually it's like I'm not I'm not really buying anything if, if I'm not really eyeing on anything. There is very little chance that something can catch my attention and I purchase it. For now, it is really that babe pillow. Even I am amazed that I can be intrigued by some fucking pillow and not anything else. And right across the same street, there's Tiffany and then there's Hamilton right beside it. So I went into Hamilton. It's a good break from the fashion and clothes from, you know, Harajuku, it's crowded, flooded with all of those. And the staff in Hamilton was really nice. They speak good English and they are really nice people. And I tried on the Jazz Master, which I really love. Yeah, great time. Going towards Omote Sando station and on the path to Aoyama, there are also plenty of really nice buildings which are boutiques. This area right here has Hugo Balls, Bottega, Hermes, Gucci, Louis Vuitton. And beside Louis Vuitton, there is this really nice looking church which I am intrigued more than Louis Vuitton store itself. The first store they actually stopped and went in and take a look was CDG. It looks pretty small on the outside, but they actually carry a ton of items and there are sections 
with different line of items within this boutique. The store is filled with these curved tiles all over and it's really unique, definitely a must check out. Passing by Miu Miu and Moncler, there's also this very iconic Prada Aoyama store, which is like the landmark for this area. If you are lost, this store will tell you where you are at. It is very recognizable and it's also a must check out. The building is designed by architecture firm Ilzok and Demihong and it has this really nice interior with lots of geometrical shapes and an all-around see-through window. You can also even see the top floors while staying below. And I'm really thankful that the sales associate actually allowed me to, you know, go around the whole store and take videos and stuff, even though I'm really not purchasing anything. I think she, I think she knows I'm just here for the store. And uh, right after that, one of them also told me that the other store right across, which is the Miu Miu store, is also done by the same architecture firm. Gucci right there, Amiri. Really nice building over here. Not the boutique, I believe. And we have Dolce & Gabbana. I believe Off-White is across this. I think it's this side. I, I believe it's here. And then later on, we have Yoji Yamamoto over there, right over there. Together with Not too far away, the Off-White store is also there. This one is called Something and Associates, which I really love. Something and Associates. I guess the whole point was to make it into an office and I just love the idea of there being a computer desk with a stock exchange. What I got from there was actually that perfume as they weren't available in Singapore. Look at this really cool bottle. This right over here is something that I always wanted to get but yeah, it wasn't available locally and I also wasn't sure which smell would be nice even though I'm really not going to smell it, it's just like for something on display but I'm so glad that this boutique has it, like, like really. I am very glad. The dressing room also has this like, cheese right over there. And also this walking out, it's like kid section. Also with this cheese hole plate. And if you guys are unfamiliar with the new off-white design language, they are using a lot of empty holes design, which they call it cheese. And this right over here just really sticks true to the off-white design formula. And I just really love it. The staff was also very kind to carry the shopping bag for me and walk me out of the store while they were closing. Heading down, there's also Thorn Brown. This one over here has a really cool exterior. Didn't enter because I was really running out of time. Stores here closes about 8pm and I was walking by the store, it was really about 7. Undercover, which I also didn't take picture of because it was too dark. And then up next is Acne Studios, which was the one that I really wanted to visit. And this one over here, being amazing for what it is, is a really special and unique boutique. I'm fortunate enough to even have a nice chat with one of the managers about the layout and design of the boutique. So this Acne Studios in Aoyama is actually the brand's first store ever in Asia. So it was quite a big deal on how the boutique is going to look, what the brand should represent what it should tell to the audience. So then the goal of this whole store and boutique was to make it feel like a Swedish house far away from Sweden and therefore it has the comfy and cozy look with the use of wooden textures, concrete walls, which I really, really love. And if you're a fan of looking at nice spaces, definitely check out the local Stagnis Studios as well. That one over there has glass panels and a metallic counter, which is really cool as well. After Igni Studios at Aoyama, it was past 8 o'clock now and it was time for me to head back to Akihabara to have dinner. So usually how I go about my day over there was that I eat dinner after 8 o'clock once I have, you know, covered most of the location that I want to cover because restaurants over there actually close pretty late, like 11 or 12. So it's smarter for me to eat after 8 o'clock. I also do not eat lunch because that will just <laughs> kill off my time. Yeah, and if you're a friend of mine, you know, I I'm not really a food person. I can go about my whole day without eating if I'm really not hungry. <laughs> From Omote Sando to Akihabara, because it was only my second day and all I have taken was the Yamanote line, going back to where I came from would be the safest bet. That is Harajuku Station. But it's 8 p.m. and it is quite dark. Traveling all the way back to Harajuku Station will take about 20 minutes walk and it is just matter for me to take the train from Omote Sando then switch to Shibuya Station for the Yamanote line. 
And just when I was figuring out how to change to Shibuya at Omote Sando Station, I ended up meeting that gentleman from Engi Studio once again, the one who explained to me the whole store concept, and we, we, we talked for like about an hour. And he got me back to the Yamanote line by directing me to the right train so I won't get lost. That was pretty memorable. And later on that night, I also stumbled across very talented baskers and a really cool dude as well who is actually a tattoo artist. It was a really cool experience to stand there in the middle of Shibuya, crowded street and just, you know, chill and talk to other people. Uh, so yeah, that, that's a pretty memorable day. The second day is really memorable. So that sums up for my first two days of the Japan trip. So stay tuned for the next upcoming video. I will be sharing the last few days of my trip, actually like kind of the next half of my trip, part two of my trip, where I'll be going to Odaiba, Ganam based Tokyo, and also Yokohama Ganam factory, Tamashi Nation to Akihabara, and also discovering the Ginza area. With a little bit of last day airport experience and also this whole trip verdict and summary overall. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.